Hello YouTube, Bane666 here. So, um, yeah, let's continue with Norkel Corner, and this time the topic is the wage gap. Uh, and don't under uh, and you don't understand the wage gap. You, gap. You claim that women get seventy seven cents to every dollar a man gets. I think the proper word you were looking for is earn, not gets. Um, yes, I am. That's probably a better way of putting it. Uh, men on average earn more because uh, men on average work longer hours. Uh, no. No. Okay, so let's cut to the chase. There is no such thing as the wage gap. Uh, particularly the way uh, many feminists uh, report there being a wage gap. There is, however, such a thing as an earnings gap. Now, some people m might not know the difference between the two, but there is a world of difference. The way the wage gap is calculated is it takes all the average earnings of men and compares them to the average earnings of women. So it doesn't take into account such things as uh, differently paid careers. Obviously someone who is a, an engineer is going to be paid more than someone who is a, a waiter or a waitress, for example. It doesn't take into account the number of hours worked, and men on average tend to work longer hours over their lifetime and also work more overtime. Uh, th this increases particularly when their partner gets pregnant and has a, a child and they need more income because their wife takes time off work. So taking these and, and many other factors into account, men on average earn more. They're, they're not given special treatment, they're not given extra money for being men. They earn more based on career choice and hours worked and, and numerous other factors that go into it. So let's look at an example. Now imagine that you have a man and a woman who work for the same company. They do exactly the same job. They have the same qualifications and experience. And they've been at the company for the same amount of time. And as the law states, and has done so for over 50 years, they get paid exactly the same hourly wage. But the man works 40 hours a week, whereas the woman only works 30 hours a week. This comes down to lifestyle choice. Often this involves uh, having children and other responsibilities, which means one person in a relationship works less and another works more. So comparing these two people together and comparing their average wage, the man earns more because he's done more work. He hasn't been paid more for the same work. He isn't being paid a dollar to her 77 cents. He is earning a dollar to her 77 cents, to use the common feminist figures. But let's use a little bit of logic here, and uh, for argument's sake, let's say that the uh, wage gap is actually legit. Let's assume, just for argument's sake, that what feminists claim is actually true. That for uh, every dollar a man is paid for exactly the same job, a woman is paid 77 cents. Let's, let's round it down to 75 cents just to make the math a little bit easier. That would mean for every three men a company hires, they could actually hire four women. Or alternatively, they could just hire three women and keep the profit. Now, we live in a capitalist society, and the aim of business is to make money. So are we really to believe that companies are willing to pay extra money just to hire men because they have penises? How, how incredibly sexist would society have to be where companies are willing to throw away profit in order just to hire men. It, it really doesn't make any sense. If you can hire someone to do the exact same job at a cheaper rate, then you will do it. That That is the bottom line of capitalism. No one is going to say, hey, you know, that, that guy is uh, no better than that woman, but I think I'll hire the guy and pay him one quarter more 
uh, because he has a penis. That's just not reality in a capitalist system. Right? You have two people who can do the exact same job and you can pay one less. You're going to go for the one you can pay less. Uh, but let's see what Norkel Corner has to say. Uh, it's not that they work longer hours. In fact, in many cases, I've actually seen women work just as many hours, eight hours to... In fact, one of my friends personally is not getting paid, again, not getting paid as much as her male employee, and they both, both work the same hours. They both work relatively the same time, and yet, and she's even worked overtime, whereas her male equivalent hasn't, and she's still getting paid less. Okay, so I've, I've heard this claim from women before where they say, oh, I'm doing exactly the same job as this other guy and, and I'm, I'm getting paid less because I'm a woman. And uh, the, the question I tend to ask them is, how do you know you're getting paid less because you're a woman? And they will, they will always say, oh, well, that's because women get paid less. So their evidence... <laughs> The evidence that the wage gap is real is the assumption that they are getting paid less because they assume that the wage gap is real. I mean, this is circular logic, <laughs> circular reasoning at its worst. Um, the, the simple truth is they don't know how much their male companions, male work companions are getting paid. They're just assuming they get paid more. Now, this may not be the case with your friend. Maybe it is an actual case where she is being ripped off and she is getting paid less. In which case, my advice would be to, for her to go and see a lawyer. Because it's been against the law for over 50 years. If she is being ripped off, then there, there are laws in place to protect her. They've been there for over five decades. There was a, a case in my home city of Melbourne in 2009 where a subway restaurant was basically ripping off Indian students and the Indian students went to the authorities and said hey you know this guy's ripping us off the, the subway manager got in a, a whole heap of trouble and he received some fairly steep fines so are we to believe that a group of Indian students in a foreign country um, when English isn't their native language, are able to work within the system to uh, to prevent themselves from being ripped off. Yet, at exactly the same time, every single woman across the Western world is incapable of doing the same thing. Every single woman, apparently, according to feminists, are unable to go to the uh, labour authorities or to a lawyer and say, hey, you know, this is against the law, it's been against the law for 50 years, why the fuck am I being ripped off, and then sue the fuck out of the company, or out of the employer? Are we really meant to believe that? Because if, if that's your argument, if that's the argument you're putting forward, it really doesn't speak very well of women, does it? Now, personally, I, I give women more credit than that. I think your average woman is far more capable of uh, actually using s uh, logic and the system <laughs> and, and having at, at very least average intelligence but if what feminists are telling us is true they're well they're weak helpless victims who can't do anything and I, I have to imagine that the feminists who constantly promote the wage gap myth know damn well that it's it's bullshit and the reason why I say this is, if they actually believed it was true, they would be organising massive class action suits against employers right across the Western world. They would be taking full advantage of the law that's been there for 50 fucking years, and there would be a mass of lawsuits right across the Western world. Yet this doesn't happen. And... <laughs> And the reason why it doesn't happen is because the the feminists who are behind promoting this know that it's bullshit. They know that it's not real. Unfortunately, uh, your average feminist who listens to the 
influential feminists are more than willing to listen and believe and often exaggerate these claims. But NorCal, look, let's uh, let's assume that what you're saying is true and your friend is being paid less for exactly the same work and exactly the same number of hours worked and you know all all the things are exactly the same with the one exception that she's getting paid less based on her gender then I would strongly suggest you be a good friend and and uh, pick up a phone book or jump online and find a name of a local lawyer that simple mate because um, if that's true if what you're saying is true then she could have a big payday basically and her employer is going to get their ass kicked that simple mate a graduate of Vassar and of the Columbia Law School and very active in a number of liberal and feminist uh, movements, Mrs. Popel. Uh, I would like to, for a moment, ask you some questions about the economics of job getting in terms of the blacks versus the whites. The statistics I was able to pull together indicate that at the present time white males make $17,427 on an average basis for the year. Black males make 12738 White females make 10,244, and black females make 9,476. It is clear from these figures, as indeed I think it's clear to most of us from what we see, that there is a discrimination against blacks and against women in our present system. Since not all blacks will be superior, how would you try to even that out so that there would be some equality of job opportunities? I'm sorry you missed the earlier part of the program when I pointed out that uh, where you find uh, people not represented evenly, that does not show the institutional effect because almost nowhere in human affairs do you find people evenly represented. Well, if, you, if you compare comparable people with respect to age, with respect to education, etc., you get a totally different picture, both with respect to blacks and women. Now, the figures that I saw, for example, show uh, more recently that if you take black families where the husband and wife are both college educated and compare them to a white family where the husband and wife are both college educated, the black family is now earning $2,000 a year more. The problem is not, the problem is that very few blacks fall in that category. That when you compare category for category, then we're talking about getting people a decent education. I'm saying that you cannot say that numbers collected at the employer's place of business reflect simply the employer's policies. Those, num those numbers reflect underlying conditions in the whole society, just as numbers collected at a hospital do not show you that the people are sick because they're in the hospital. Oh, I, I would agree with that, but you would also have to agree that, generally speaking, women are paid less, for example, for the same jobs as men. No, I would not. I would not agree with that. If you're talking about women with the same number of years of experience, with the same continuous service, et cetera, et cetera, then when I look at that, I don't find that disparity. I find, for example, in many cases, the women are making more, depending on how you break the data down. The difference with women is between, unmar is between married women and everybody else. That's the real difference. Well, even as to single women, the Census Bureau statistics, the most recent ones I could find, 1978, say that single men are earning $11,100 and single women are earning $9,300. Yes, I, lo I love the word single that is used. When I did my study, I didn't use single, I used never married. You see, a woman who is single at age 40, having spent 10 or 20 years raising children, is really not quite the same as a man of age 40 who's been working continuously for 20 years. And the differential she cited is not that great, so it could easily be accounted for by, by, by the Yes, because raised. when I break them down the other way, I, I did this for the academic world, and there I found the uh, women who are never married, which is the term way I, I take it, uh, there they were earning more than the men. And similarly, when the government did data some years ago on women who had been working continuously since high school into, the thir into the, their 30s, uh, there you found that they were making slightly more than men of the same description. So the difference is between married women and everybody else. And married men get an extra bonus because their wives take care of many things that enable them to put more time into their careers.